Well, he was like, you've got to ask him about Jesus's twin brother. Yes. Because I remember when I was really young, dad saying something about that, but I wasn't listening. Um, so yeah. what? where does that come from? And why did that disappear? Oh, I'm like really, really close. Hi, Hi. Bar, I'm Johanna. Hi, Johanna. Nice to meet you. Um, my dad is a massive fan, so I have to say hi on behalf of my dad. He was like, what, you're going to interview Bar? I've read like all his books. So, um, Is he in England? He's in England as well. Yeah, yeah. He's, um, um, he, it, well, our background is we are all kind of from a fundamental Christian background. My grandparents very much so. My dad went to Bible college to be a Bible scholar, and then he kind of opened up way more questions. And so he's super into... Um, all the kind of agnostic side of everything. Um, I'm very much into it, but I'm also into ancient history and how, so I, I, my videos a lot often go into how sort of biblical texts line up with historical findings that kind of either support them or don't support them um, or how they're similar to other things. So I've got a bunch of questions that I'd love okay. to pick your brain about. Okay. Um, number one is about Mary or the Marys. Um, they kind of disappear after like the crucifixion in, in the Bible. And I wanted if you knew like where they went and are there any other texts to the Marys that maybe aren't in the Bible that could shed some light on that? Uh, well, there, you know, with the, <clears throat> with the, um, with Jesus mother, Mary, uh, of course, there's a lot, there are a lot of texts. The, the, this, the seminar I'm doing on December 5th is going to deal a lot with Mary and, and the mother of Jesus and the stories about her because there are a lot of stories from outside the New Testament, including some gospels called, there's a gospel called the Proto Gospel of James, which which is all about Mary. Like, what, why was she chosen? And what was so special about her? And, you know, and, and how was she raised in holiness and that kind of thing. Um, the other Marys uh, we do have legends about from later. Uh, they, um, the, the, the one people are most interested in is uh, Mary Magdalene. It turns out the New Testament tells us almost nothing about her. <laughs> even, though, even, even though people say that, you know, she was, you know, Jesus lover or something. It's like, yeah. Yeah, no. I think Dan <laughs> Brown had something to do with that. I definitely yeah, thought yeah, like, yeah. oh my goodness. But Yeah, okay. so, but, but there are other gospels that, may, and there's a gospel that Mary allegedly, the, the gospel of Mary about her. So we do have legendary accounts. We don't have any factual historical information about any of these. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's all through, right. Okay. Yeah. Because I find that like women play quite a massive important role in the stories of the Bible, like yeah. br brought up the fact that when Jesus was res resurrected, the first people to know was two women. It was like spread the news. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, kind of then again, when the, when the early church then sort of started after Jesus went, I think women kind of disappeared quite quickly from the inner circle. And well, they I did, but you know, they started out being pretty important. I mean, even in the writings of Paul, Paul talks about a woman who's a deacon and uh, w women who are missionaries and women who have helped him on his mission and he calls one woman, the lead, one of the leading apostles. <laughs> and so, you know, so, but then, but then you're right. Then it kind of fades off the scene as soon as the guys get involved. Yeah. Okay. Um, and well, the, well, my next question kind of ties in with um, how the Bible was put together, but more, what are your favorite not Bible Bible books that didn't make it into the canon? Yeah. But, um, okay. Are still kind of a yeah. official text, but not official. Yeah, there are, you know, there are great, there are great, uh, there's some great gospels out there. Not, none of them is historically accurate. Uh, they do, there's some of them may have some historical information in them, like the, like the Coptic gospel of Thomas, which is 114 sayings of Jesus, uh, about half of which are not found in the New Testament. Some, some of these sayings may go back to Jesus or uh, the gospel of Peter. Uh, which is about Jesus' death and resurrection with a very strange alternative resurrection account. Um, what happens in a brief? Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, no, this is great. It's just a little fragment of a text. We don't have the entire gospel, but at the resurrection, Jesus is buried and the, the guard is posted by the tomb. And as the Roman guard is watching, two figures descend from heaven and the stone rolls away from in front of the tomb. And the these angels go into the tomb, then they come out and um, they're supporting somebody between them. And they're so tall, their heads are above the mountains. And uh, then a cross walks out behind them and a voice comes from heaven and says, have you preached to those who are asleep? And the cross says, yes. <laughs> like, 
like a cross cross like what he was like the cross jesus died on <laughs> so the okay. cross that voice is speaking to the cross and the cross is replying and <laughs> so it's like it's great it's really great i mean that's like the director's cut we didn't get that <laughs> i know we didn't get that one yeah which we had yeah <laughs> and okay so um so yeah your personal favorite like non-canon bible which would be your favorite if you were going to recommend a read well that one's good but the one i really like is called the infancy gospel of thomas this is another one i'll be talking about in my seminar uh, on, on sunday because it's on it's about uh jesus it's something that's not in the new testament what was jesus like as a boy uh, yes. you, know, you know, you know, he's a supernatural, you know, miracle working son of God as an adult. What was he like as a kid? And the uh, this gospel tells stories about Jesus uh, from the age of five to 12. Uh, and they're fascinating stories that most people have never heard. But, but they and they're fairly early. They probably come from the second century. But they um, they show that Jesus is, you know, he's a miracle working son of God as a kid too, but he wasn't mature yet. And like, he's, you know, he had a temper and he's a bit mischievous. And so like, and so he uses these miracles. I think I've, I've heard of this. I think there's one where like, isn't like a kid dies in an accident and he like brings him back. Yeah, well, before, yes, he does that, but he does that only after he's zapped other kids. So oh, in one okay. episode, a kid, kid, he's walking through town and a kid runs, they're playing in the streets and some kid runs up and bumps into his shoulder. And Jesus turns to the kid and says, you'll go no further on your way. And the kid falls down dead. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. So, I, so these texts are a bit problematic. Is that probably why they didn't make the cut? Because they, I mean, Jesus killed someone. Well, yeah, I mean, in this gospel, he ends up using his powers for good and he raises this kid from the dead. And from then on, it, it gets bad and gets better. Okay. But, yeah, it, you know, it's really difficult to know whether people in the ancient world, Christians in the ancient world would have read these as problematic or not. And whether they would have thought thought they were funny or not, <laughs> because the day you read them, you think, wow, yeah. that's, that's pretty interesting. But it may be that they were actually trying to portray what somebody like that would have been as a child. And uh, they, in some ways, foreshadow the things Jesus is going to be doing later in life with his miracles and his confrontations with Jewish teachers and co conflicts about the Sabbath and things like that. I'm sorry, what was the name of that one again? You said it was the it's infancy. Called the, it's called the Infancy Gospel of Thomas. Of Thomas. So infancy, infancy means kind of the old fashioned way of being young, a young boy, not, not being a newborn. Right, because, yeah, because in the Bible, Jesus is a baby, and then once when he's, like, 12 and he runs away from his parents, and then he's just 33, and, like, yeah. Yeah, they miss it. all the teenage years out as well. Yeah, good years. So, uh, yeah, that's what this one's about. Wait till they find the gospel of the teenage years. That's going to yeah, be right. yeah. way old. I mean, yeah, <laughs> Jesus turns water into loads of things. Um, okay, that's interesting. So could you, if for anybody who's, like, on my channel who doesn't understand the way that the the, Bible, the books that made it into the Bible, like why they made it in like that. Because again, my early, my only reference was the Dan Brown movie because um, wow. they yeah. said, oh, the Council of Nicaea. But uh, is yeah. that in the, the quickest way possible? Because I know we've only got a short amount of time. Well, who, who made the cut on that? Who decided what was biblical? Right. Okay, so here's the surprise. Uh, for one thing, no, the Council of Nicaea had nothing to do with it. <laughs> they didn't okay. talk about. They didn't talk about the canon. They didn't vote on the, it. Wasn't even an issue at the Council of Nicaea. Um, the uh, there were debates about which books should be included from early days because Christians inherited the scriptures of the Jews. They had the Jewish Bible that, that became their Old Testament, but then mm -hmm. they wanted their own writings, which they also saw as authoritative. And so they had to decide in different Christian communities and different Christian leaders had different favorites and ones they thought that were had been inspired by God. The debates went on for decades, decades, centuries. Uh, it's not until the end of the fourth century around in, in the year 367 that um, anybody listed our 27 books and said, these are the 27 books. Uh, it was a figure named Athanasius. He was the Bishop of Alexandria, Egypt. And he actually was at the Council of Nicaea 45 years earlier, but they didn't talk about it. 42. Years. Okay. Yeah. But so anyway, so he's the first one to list those books. And it wasn't even decided then. There never was a church council that made a decision. It was really just kind of a consensus thing that happened. So there was no official decision about it in the early church, period. Okay. So it just kind of. Everybody was agreeing pretty much. 
Okay, just do you, do you agree, Bob? Well, yeah, okay. No, I don't like the one about the, the kid dying. We'll take that even, even Bob would say, you know, actually, I think Second Peter is a forgery. Uh, you know, they, okay. th those discussions continued on into the fourth and fifth centuries. Well, this was uh, a question that came from my dad. Um, well, he was like, you've got to ask him about Jesus's twin brother. Yes. Because I remember when I was really young, dad saying something about that, but I wasn't listening. Um, so yeah. what? where does that come from? And why did that disappear? Well, when I mentioned the infancy gospel of Thomas, that's allegedly written by his twin brother, <laughs> Thomas. Oh. So there's a figure, there's a figure in early Christianity named Judith, uh, Didymus Judas Thomas, Judas Didymus Thomas, Didymus Judas Thomas, it goes by different names. It's Didymus Judas Thomas. Yeah. And the word Didymus in Greek means twin. And the word Thomas in Aramaic means twin. So this is somebody named Judas the twin. Judas is another word for Jude. In the New Testament, Jesus has a brother named Jude. In these later traditions, Jude isn't just Jesus' brother. He's his twin brother. And in one set of texts, he's his identical twin brother. They look just alike. And so well, that's this, confusing. <laughs> you would you died. No, bro, that was my twin brother. <laughs> oh, that they play on that. So the story is main found mainly found in is in a book called The Acts of Thomas. It's about his missionary activities. People think of Thomas as the missionary to India. Thomas, the missionary to India business, comes from this Acts of Thomas. And in this book, he is Jesus' identical twin. He looks just like him. And it happens after his resurrection. And they do that double switch thing, you know, in one of the scenes. <laughs> it's, it's pretty amusing. But okay. so, yeah. But that brings up a lot of problems because if, like, yeah. Jesus, well, you know, it was a miracle birth. And but what it, what was his twin not? Like, was he, was he not right. divine? And one, like, that's, I mean, yeah. that's going to cause arguments, isn't it? Yeah. So these traditions we have come from the, come from the area of Syria. And the Syrian sources that talk about this don't tell us how they're working this out. But, I mean, I have a theory about this, which is that in Greek and Roman mythology, there are numerous cases in which uh, a woman has gotten pregnant by her husband. And then one of the gods, usually Zeus or Jupiter, uh, sees that she's really attractive and wants to have sex with her and comes down and takes on and, and gets her pregnant. Right. And she ends up having two children. One is the son of Zeus and one is the son of, uh, of her husband. And so that's that's Hercules. Hercules has a twin brother. In, in Greek, it's Heracles. Heracles has a twin oh, brother. Twin. Yeah, Heracles has a twin brother named Iphicles. Iphicles is the son of the, the mortal, and Heracles is the son of, of uh, Zeus. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Do, you, do you think that would be one is uh, influencing the other? Do you think if that was if they genuinely believed that Jesus was a one divine twin of a non-divine twin, that that story kind of got replicated into Greek? That's my mythology? suspicion. That's my suspicion. The, 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 the one about Heracles is much earlier than... Christianity is before Christianity. Oh, okay. And so he, that would be influencing. That, my 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 theory about this is that in Syria they thought that Jesus some some Christians thought Jesus had a twin brother who was the son of Joseph, and that Jesus though was was born of a virgin. So she's a vir he she first got pregnant by by God and then later Men. she had and they yeah, had twins. <laughs> Man. That Whatever. is a complicated, I mean, that's going to be on some, one of those like reality TV shows, isn't it? Your twin brother, Jesus. Exactly. Okay. That's great. Um, oh my goodness. I'm nearly out of time. So I just want to, for um, my followers watching this, if they want to know more, because you're going to be doing a whole webinar about the nativity and more yeah. about Mary and more about everything. Where can they find that? So and this is going to be on December 5th. It's going to be Sunday. It's going to be four lectures back to back to back to back with a lunch break. Uh, and people can ask questions as they come on to it. There'll be a question after, after each lecture. And it's going to be on where uh, did the Christmas story really happen? And okay. uh, it's about you know, what we know about the birth of Jesus and what, what's probably legendary, what's probably factual. How do we know what's legendary, what's factual, both outside the New Testament and inside the New Testament? And so um, if they go to barkdierman.com slash Christmas, uh, I suppose you'll probably be putting a link up or something. To, to I will share. put a link in the description, yeah. 100%. So, um, so, so uh, it's an all-day webinar, and uh, it's going to cover all this stuff. <laughs> Great. That's exactly what I'm into. I'm into like looking at the ancient texts and then cross-referencing with what do we know outside of it and yeah. kind of piecing yeah. where could have the inspiration come from elsewhere. Yeah. Love it. Thank you so much, Bart. I think, and time. 
Okay, my pleasure. Yeah, thanks. We did that in 15 <laughs> minutes. Amazing. Right. Exactly.